fat mouse, I call him Mortimer. He's got two pink ears and a long grey nose, and he lives on the fridge door. He's always eating something, and he's always filling his face. Now he's so fat and ever so slow that a tortoise beat him in a race. Now he is my favourite mouse, I call him Mortimer. I always know where to find him, he lives on the fridge door. He's always eating something, and he's always filling his face. Now he's so fat and ever so slow that a tortoise beat him in a race. So slow that a tortoise beat him in a race He's always eating something And he's always filling his face Now he's so fat and ever so slow That a tortoise beat him in a race The Bell on the Cat Well, a long time ago All the mice got together to discuss their sad situation they decided that their problem was cats and they talked about many different ideas that would stop mice from being hunted by them. After many hours, they eventually reached a solution. They all decided that a bell, rather like this one, should be attached around every cat's neck so the mice would hear them coming, you see. Well, this law still exists today, but no mouse has yet volunteered to put the bells on the cats. I wonder why. Hickory dickory dock The mouse ran off the clock The clock struck one The mouse ran down Hickory dickory dock Dickory dickory duck The mouse ran up the clock The clock struck one The mouse ran down Dickory dickory duck Six little mice sat down to spin. Pussy passed by and she peeped in. What are you doing, my little men? We're weaving coats for gentlemen. Shall I come in and cut off your threads? No, no, Mistress Pussy, you'd bite off our heads. Oh, no, I'll not. I'll help you spin. That may be so, but you don't come in. The cat and the old mouse. One day a black cat found his way into a larder where mice lived. I've got the chance to catch something here, thought the cat. I'll pretend to be dead, and when the mice come up to me, I'll catch them. And with that he lay very still on the ground. The young mice at once ran towards it, shouting, Look, look, it's a dead cat! But a wise old mouse stopped them from getting too close and said, Don't you know that a cat has nine lives? The old mouse then climbed onto a shelf. He chewed open a large packet of flour which poured out and fell all over the cat. Nothing happened for a moment. Then there was a big sneeze. Achoo! And out of the clouds of flour walked a white cat. Three blind mice, three blind mice, see how they run, see how they run. They all ran after the farmer's wife, who cut off their tails with a carving knife. Did ever you see such a thing in your life as three blind mice, three blind mice, three blind mice.
The Cockerel, the Cat, and the Mouse A young little mouse decided to go for a walk. On the way, he met a cockerel. He hadn't seen one of these before and was so afraid of its bright feathers, its long beak and red crest, that he quickly ran away. A little further on, he came across a cat. What a beautiful animal, he thought. What soft! shiny coat and big green eyes it has. When he got home, he told his mother about the two creatures he had met on his travels. Oh, you are a very foolish and lucky mouse, said his mother. That frightening looking animal you ran away from was a cockerel. That will never do you any harm. But the fine looking creature that you stayed to gaze at is our enemy, the cat. You see, you should never go by appearances. I bought a fish on a dish and a turnip for some stew. I bought a jelly and a bright green welly and a duck egg, which was blue. I boiled them up in a paper cup and served them with some rice. But it tasted very strange, so I threw it down the drain and went hunting for some mice. Lane, deep in the roots of an old tree, lived Country Mouse. One evening, he was surprised to see his cousin Town Mouse coming down the lane to visit him. Look out! shouted Country Mouse as he saw an owl swooping down to grab Town Mouse. He pushed him into a ditch and the owl flew away. What a fright they both had. Welcome, cousin, said Country Mouse. You love the country. It's so nice and quiet. After a while, Country Mouse made a big supper. But Town Mouse did not like the thick mugs and plates or the plain food. At bedtime, Town Mouse did not like his little straw bed. It made him scratch and sneeze. I can't sleep, called out Town Mouse. It's too dark and quiet in the country. So Country Mouse gave him some candles and a hot drink. Every morning, Country Mouse was busy finding food for the winter. Come and help me, cousin, called Country Mouse. But Town Mouse did not like the work, and he did not like getting his hands and clothes dirty. One morning, they crossed the meadow to find some mushrooms for tea. The horse who lived in the meadow came to make friends with the mice. But Town Mouse was so surprised, he fell head over heels into the wet grass. Ow! I don't like the country, sighed Town Mouse. It's dark. 
It's cold, it's wet, and it's too quiet. Oh, cousin, said Town Mouse, I am tired of the country. In the town, it is warm and dry, and there is no need to look for food. You must come and see for yourself. Later that day, Town Mouse saw the family at the end of the lane getting into the car to go to town. Bye -bye. Come on, Country Mouse, he yelled. Let's go! They hid in the car and jumped out when they got into town. Poor Country Mouse had never heard so much noise or seen so many lights. They soon arrived at the house where they were greeted by Town Mouse's family. How big the house was. It was all too big for Country Mouse. Town Mouse and his family began to feast on fruit, cakes, chocolate and cream. But it was all too rich and sweet for Country Mouse and he could hardly eat a thing. It was soon bedtime. But Country Mouse did not like his soft little bed, and he couldn't get to sleep with all the light from the street lamps flooding into his room. Next day, Town Mouse and a tired Country Mouse went for a picnic in the park. But the ducks and geese ate all their food and chased them away. Back at the house, Country Mouse was almost sucked into the carpet cleaner. It was a very unhappy mouse. If this was not enough, he was saved from a trap by Town Mouse and his family. But they were seen by the cat and had to run for their lives back to the hole in the wall. That night, Country Mouse dreamt of the country and the smell of the earth and the trees. How he wished that he was back at home. In the morning, when Country Mouse woke up, he was surprised to see a big, brightly decorated tree in the room. It was Christmas, and there were lots of parcels under the tree. Town Mouse was standing on top of a large hamper in the middle of the room. It's going near your home, cried Town Mouse. Country Mouse could at last go home. He said goodbye to his cousin, and crawled into the hamper just as it was being put into the van. Country Mouse jumped out of the van as it passed the lane where he lived. Suddenly he heard the church bells ringing. It was Christmas Eve. Country Mouse ran to the church. He knew all his country friends would be there to sing carols. Come, Country Mouse! said the smallest mouse. You can spend all Christmas telling us all your great adventures. Country Mouse smiled. All he wanted to do was forget.
Robin Redbreast sat upon a tree. Up went Pussycat, and down went he. Down came Pussy, and away Robin ran. Says little Robin Redbreast, Catch me if you can. Little Robin Redbreast jumped upon a wall. Pussycat jumped after him, and almost got a fall. Little Robin chirped and sang, and what did Pussy say? Pussycat said, Meow. And Robin ran away. The Lion and the Mouse A lion had caught a mouse and was preparing to eat it for a snack. Oh, please don't eat me, cried the mouse. You never know, one day you may need my help. Well, the lion found the thought of this little creature helping him, the king of the jungle, so ridiculous that he laughed out loud and let the mouse go because it had amused him. Some time later, however, the lion stumbled into a net set by hunters to catch him. But then, who should come along? Yes, you've guessed it, none other than the little mouse. The mouse set about chewing through the net, and eventually he freed the lion. You see, said the mouse, even the mighty sometimes need the help of the weak. Pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to look at the Queen. Pussycat, pussycat, what did you there? I frightened a little mouse under the chair. Pussycat, pussycat, where have you been? I've been to London to look at the Queen. Pussycat, pussycat, what did you there? I frightened a little mouse under the chair. 